Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sally and this is Secret Life of a Seamstress. So if you're new to my channel, I upload videos all about fabric and sewing, uh, things I've made. Um, sometimes I've done a few sew alongs and things like that. Um, so if you're into that kind of thing, if you're into sewing and making and dressmaking, then I'd love you to subscribe if you haven't already and click the notification bell so that you can um, find out when I'm making more videos. Um, so today I'm here to share with you all of my makes, everything that I made in June um, and I just feel at the moment that the time is flying by. Um, I feel like I say that in every single video but it really is. I can't believe that we're in July already. Um, these lockdown months seem to be kind of flying by but also going really slowly. Um, so yeah, it's a bit of a strange time but I still managed to get quite a few things made in June. Um, I've got five or six sort of dressmaking things to show you, um, a couple of home things that I've been making around the house and um, a knitting project. So I didn't do too badly in June. I felt like I didn't get a lot of my sort of planned makes done uh, dressmaking wise, but I did get quite a lot of other things made. So firstly, I'll start with what I'm wearing as always. Um, and this is the Sew Over It Silk Cami top which I made from this really lovely Atelier Brunette crepe, viscose crepe I think it is and um, I'll just stand up so that you can see obviously I've got it tucked in at the moment with this skirt um, but yeah it's turned out really lovely and I'm really really pleased with this sometimes I find on the silk cami that the facing doesn't lay flat and I'm not quite sure why but this one actually turned out quite nicely um, it is laying quite flat around my neckline there um, and sometimes I find that the facing rolls out in this pattern and I'm not sure if it was me or if it's something to do with the pattern. Uh, but yeah, as I say, this one's turned out really nicely. Um, I've got it obviously tucked into this skirt today. Um, this is just a really old Primark pleated skirt, but um, this is the kind of outfit that I really like to wear these kind of tops with. I did French seam everything inside because the fabric Although it was quite nice to sew, it was quite delicate, so I thought it deserved a French seam. So I French seamed the sides. Um, I did overlock the hem and the facing bottom actually, because I tried to do a rolled hem, but my rolled hem foot wasn't having it for some reason. So I decided just to overlock the bottom and the facing, and that turned out fine actually. So I'm really, really pleased with this. I do love the silk cami pattern because the straps are a little bit wider so you can quite easily wear them with a bra um, you don't have to worry about your bra strap showing or anything it's just quite a nice cami top really and it's a lovely quick make as well I think I sewed this up in about an hour and a half once it was all cut out and everything so yeah we always like a nice quick project and this is the pattern I've got it as PDF I'm not sure if it comes in a paper pattern actually I think it might only be a PDF um, but yeah it's got a curved hem as well. Obviously I've got mine tucked in. But yeah, I really, really like that pattern. I've got quite a few of those in different fabrics now. And I have to say, this is my favourite one. And I think it's just because of the fabric that I've used that it's kind of more drapey and more silky, I suppose, than the others that I've made. Um, and it hangs in the way that it should. So obviously it's designed for like a silky kind of silk cami uh, fabric. <laughs> Um, and yeah, it just works really well. So I'm really, really pleased with that. As always with the Tilly Brunette fabrics, it's just beautiful. That's what I'm wearing. Um, something else that I made, which I'm really, really pleased with is the Agnes top. And I can't believe it's taken me so long to make this pattern. Um, this is the Agnes top. And obviously I made the sort of puffy gathered sleeve version that you can see there. So I've seen so many versions of this pattern online um, and as I've mentioned in other vlogs I'm still quite nervous about sewing with jersey it's definitely not my favourite fabric to work with um, so I'd kind of put off trying it because I was a bit nervous about the neckline and things and I just didn't think it would be something that I could sew very well but um, after seeing so many versions online I really felt like I just needed like a basic uh, t-shirt staple top in my wardrobe so I went with this pattern I had it for Christmas actually and it's taken me six months to get around to sewing it um, but I finally plucked up the courage to give it a go and I'm so glad I did because it came together so nicely um, the neck band 
went in really flat and I actually just made the neck, neck band according to the pattern piece that was given in the pattern and by some miracle it actually fitted properly and went in perfectly first time which is very unusual for me and neck bands normally I just get in a bit of a mess with them and I can't get them to lie flat but that one worked fine. This fabric's from Minerva, it's a uh, viscose jersey I think and I've got this in two colourways now, there's like a mint and a blue and grey I think as well um, but I really liked this colourway, um, I think it's kind of a bit almost a bit of a retro kind of stripe um, and I thought it went really well with the pattern so I'm so pleased with that. Um, I won't put all of my wet makes on now, I'll just insert some pictures so that you can see me wearing them if you want to. But yeah, so pleased with that. That's the Agnes top if you need to see it. I think everyone but me has probably made that pattern by now. <laughs> but yeah, I really want to make a few more of those. I definitely like to make just a plain sort of round neck um, flat sleeved version but I think that puffy sleeve is really nice for summer so yeah I made a straight size 2 which actually came up quite small um, and I, I did cut the pattern just like straight from the pattern piece I normally trace but this time I decided not to because I thought no tilly patterns in a size 2 normally always fit me fine but this time it did come up slightly small um, it was fine, but instead of taking the one centimetre seam allowance at the side, I just overlocked it so there wasn't a seam allowance. If I can show you. Can you see? So it was just, um, just like a straight overlock down the side rather than taking in a seam allowance, and that's fine, it does fit. But I think if I'd have taken the seam allowance as well, it would have been slightly tight. So yeah, that's a lesson to me to always trace. <laughs> But I think it'll be fine. I think it's actually the fabric. It's not got that much stretch in it. So maybe with a stretchier fabric next time it might be okay in a size two. I'll put my measurements down below just in case that's interesting to you. Okay, so next um, I did make one of my dresses that I was planning to make. Um, and I won't talk too much about this one because I've made a whole other video on this. The Darling Ranges dress again by Megan Nielsen. And I made it in this lovely um, embroidered hem or embroidered selvage chambray fabric from Higgs and Higgs. Um, and I've made a whole sew along, sew with me kind of video of me making this dress. Um, it's not a tutorial or anything, it's just kind of a chatty video of me making this so that you can see how I do it. If you're interested, then I'll link that down below. But I'm really, really pleased with how this has turned out. It's just such a lovely, lovely fabric. It's really soft um, for a chambray and I'm pleased with how the hem turned out. If you can see, float it past the camera. <laughs> um, but it's really lovely. And I think I love the Megan I love the Darling Rangers dress in a chambray fabric anyway and it just kind of adds something to have that embroidered hem. So really really pleased with that. And if you're interested in how I do the sleeveless version because that's not part of the pattern. Um, I do kind of talk a bit about that in my other video um, of how I alter the pattern slightly just so that I can make this sleeveless. Even though I've shown this pattern a million times before on my channel, just in case you need to see it, there is the Darling Ranges dress by Megan Nielsen. Absolutely love that pattern. But I've made quite a few versions now, so I think I need to move on and make something different <laughs> by way of a shirt dress. I'll find something new to make. So next up, I tried um, a hack of the silk cami. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, I've put a photo of a lovely top I found um, from Suzanne mm -hmm. top. Button down camisole top with like a ruffle um, flounce around the edge. And I'll pop a picture in if I can, um, just so that you can see what I mean. So one evening I just decided to have a go at hacking the silk cami pattern um, into a button down top um, and try adding a little bit of a flounce to see how that would work and um, this is how it turned out. So I've made that in a cotton, like a cotton floral, um, it's like a quilting cotton, it's quite a heavy cotton um, but that's all I really had that I didn't want to sort of spoil. <laughs> um, so I tried it with that and I've chopped off the 
curved hem at the bottom there and just made it straight and then I've added on a button band to make it button down the middle um, and as you can see I've tried to cut a flounce but it's not very flouncy so I just did that one evening without even really looking up how to do it um, just to see how it would work and since then I've kind of had a bit more of a read and research how to calculate flounce patterns um, so I'm going to have another go at that. I'm really pleased with how the button band turned out um, I think it looks really lovely as a button down top and I would definitely, even though this is a bit of a wearable twirl, um, I would definitely wear that because I think it just looks really nice and it's just like a sort of button down blouse really rather than a camisole but yeah, I'm glad that I've worked out anyway how to do a button down version of the silk cami because I think that will come in really handy for future hacks and patterns because I really love button down tops and dresses at the moment and I think I'll be probably making a few more of those um, but in terms of the flounce um, I've worked out how to do that now um, by calculating a circle and cutting out a flounce pattern so I'm going to have another go at that and see if I can kind of recreate this top that I have in my head. I do have some other Italy brunette fabric that I'd really like to use for that pattern if it goes well. I might do another twirl or I might just cut straight into it, I don't know, I'll see how brave I'm feeling on the day. But um, yeah, if anyone's interested in how I did that button down kind of hack, then um, let me know and I'll maybe, don't know, record a video or a blog post or something about how I did it. And lastly, for the kind of dressmaking makes, this is the little um, dress that I made for my daughter. Um, if you remember from quite a few fabric haul videos ago, um, she chose these fabrics herself and she wanted me to make um, one of these dresses from this simplicity pattern that I've had for ages and ages since she was quite small. Um, and she wanted the version with the sash. This dress idea actually came from the uh, episode of the sewing bee where they had like a smock dress pattern to make for little girls on the sewing bee and she watched that with me and she really really liked the smock dresses um, but she's eight now and I looked pretty much everywhere I could think of and I couldn't find a smock dress pattern and I've never tried any smocking or sort of shearing or anything before so I didn't really feel confident giving it a go myself without having a pattern but I could not find any shearing sort of smock style dresses um, in an age eight pattern. They were all sort of baby patterns. So I don't know if she's maybe a little bit old for the smock style dresses now. But anyway, we settled on this um, dress. The sash is falling down now. I haven't actually attached that on properly. Um, and it's just a bodice with the sleeves and a pleated skirt. And she chose these fabrics and I thought to myself I wasn't quite sure how they would go together but actually now they are sewn together I think they look really pretty and this dress is supposed to have a big zip down the back actually um, but I didn't have a zip available so I've just kept the bodice open and done it as a lining and I've put little poppers on it just to make it easier and I like that better for children's clothes anyway I'm not really a big fan of zips in uh, like little girls dresses I think they look a bit unnecessary really because this goes over her head fine and um, just with the poppers so she's actually going to come and model this for you in a minute and um, so I'll let her talk a bit more about it but that's a really lovely pattern for a little girl's dress and um, kind of like this vintage version at the bottom there if you can see with like the puffy sleeves I'd really like to make that for her but I'm not quite sure how she's gonna feel about those sleeves <laughs> But it's so pretty and it's really kind of old school little girl's dress. She's actually getting a little bit big for this pattern now because she's eight, as I say. And based on her measurements, I, just, I actually made an age six and it still fit her. I always find that these kind of simplicity patterns, they come up a little bit big and it was fine. But I think it's not going to be long before she grows out of that pattern. I need to make, I need to buy the bigger size version of that. And get even more use out of it but yeah it was really nice to make something like that for her I haven't made anything for her for a while now okay so on to home makes but I made my daughter some blinds for her bedroom um, and she had some really old blinds in her bedroom which I've made um, when my son actually had that room and they were just plain white and they let in a lot of light 
Um, and she kept waking up really early in the morning, so I thought to myself that I needed to make some black outlines blinds for her bedroom. But she's got, in her bedroom, she's got one teeny tiny window and then one really, really wide window. And I absolutely hate making blinds for that window because it's so wide. And um, even though it's not a difficult task because there's so much fabric, it's quite hard to kind of keep the, you know, the line straight on it and everything. So I'll insert a picture here of them finished. So what I made was Roman blinds um, and I used this lovely fabric, which is like a heavy upholstery cotton fabric um, for the front. And then I lined the back with um, a blackout, thermal blackout lining, um, just to try and block out some of the light. Um, and they turned out really nicely and she's just got plain pink curtains. So I think having that sort of pop of pattern and colour in the middle, it really looks nice in her bedroom. So that was a task that I wasn't really looking forward to because of the huge window, but I'm glad it's done now. So yeah, that's just sort of a boring task that I know I needed to get done. Um, and I'm really glad that that's done and I'm really pleased with how they turned out. So that's a good one. And then, also, um, for home sewing projects, we recently decorated our dining room and I've got a new dining table. Um, and we've got these wooden chairs now, which are really lovely, but they're a bit sort of hard. So I wanted to make some cushions for them. So I had quite a lot of cushion pads over, just stuffed in a cupboard upstairs and some fabric um, remains that I'd had from years ago. I'm not even sure where these fabric remains came from, but sometimes I use these kind of um, fabrics for work and things and I just end up with remains everywhere so <laughs> um, I thought I would put my what I had to good use and I made some cushions for our dining table um, and I just made them kind of a mishmash of kind of beige fabrics and duck egg blue so here's one of them um, just made with this sort of doggy print fabric it's just an envelope style cushion um, and then I just used a contrast star print for the back just to give a little bit of interest and I made four of those so that we've got one each and um, I won't show you all of them but there's that one and then there's this really cute sort of bee print duck egg blue colour cushion and um, I just added the duck egg blue stripe to the back just to give a bit of interest again um, and it's a great way to use up fabric scraps doing it that way I think it looks nice and also you get to use up more of your fabric doing that thing. So what I've done with the other cushions is I've just alternated. So we've got a stripey front and then a V back. And then again with the doggy print one. I've got like a star front and then a doggy print back just so they kind of alternate. Yeah, and that was just a really quick and easy sort of afternoon project. Um, and it was really nice to get those done. And it was nice to do some sort of home bits from again because I haven't really made anything for the home for a while. Um, yeah, and it's just nice to have things that you've made. In your own home I think. So if anyone's interested I have actually done a tutorial on my blog um, about how to make these envelope style cushion covers. It's a really really quick easy beginner sewing project um, and yeah if you're interested then I'll link that down below. So finally I feel like I'm running out of breath in this video there's more things to talk about than I thought. Um, yes yeah, so finally I have a knitting project to show you um, and this was the first um, ever Wool and the Gang kit that I've brought. Um, and I chose to buy the Crazy Little Cardigan. And that was, it came as a kit um, from Wool and the Gang. And this is how it turned out. And it looks okay when I'm holding it up like that, but I'm not overly enamoured with this cardigan um, or the pattern actually. <laughs> um, I'm not the best knitter in the world, I'm definitely not very technical with knitting, I don't know how to change patterns, I don't know how to resize things or anything like that. Um, I just like a basic sort of easy knitting pattern and I've made quite a few knitted projects but I'm never anything very complicated so I chose this pattern thinking it would be quite easy and um, I did my tension squares and everything and the you do a tension square for the rib and the stocking stitch um, in this pattern and the stocking stitch no sorry the rib came out absolutely huge in my tension square but the stocking stitch 
or the needles they recommend was fine. So that was my first problem with it. So I decided to downsize the rib a little bit um, so that instead of making it really wide, I kept my stitches the same so I didn't have to decrease when I came to the end of the rib, if that makes any kind of sense. But um, so yeah, that was my first problem. And then coming up to do the raglan sleeves here, when it came to sewing it up, the sleeves were way, way longer than the raglan um, kind of front bit to sew it together like that. And I thought, oh, this doesn't look very good. And I kind of had a hunt around on Instagram and online just to see if anyone else had had a similar problem. And it turns out that I'm definitely not the only one that's had that problem with this pattern. So I'm not overly happy with that kit because Wool and the Gang knitting kits are not cheap. Um, and yeah, I don't think that pattern's written very well. I mean, with the rib being so wide, I couldn't have downsized as an downsized the needles because they were already on a three and a half and this wool is kind of like an Aran weight cotton so yeah it was a bit strange that's why I sometimes put off with knitting because especially knitting actual garments because I feel like they're so, they take so long to do so much work and um, if they turn out to not be quite right then you know it's a bit of a waste of time okay so that is everything I made in June um a few more things than I thought I'd made actually. It's quite a good exercise to go through and just see exactly what you have made in the month because I didn't feel like I'd made a lot, but it turns out I actually had. So I hope this video isn't too long and waffly. Um, I'd love you to subscribe if you haven't already. Um, I have a few new ideas for videos. Hopefully next doing a So The Look video where I'm going to try and recreate a dress I've seen on the high street. Um, and I'm also going to film a Tilly and the Buttons pattern collection video so they should be up in July so I'd love you to subscribe and hit the notification bell if you haven't already subscribed enjoy the rest of your day we're going to start our homeschooling now very late in the morning um, so yeah enjoy the rest of your day and I'll see you soon welcome to my bit um, um, yeah so today I'm going to show you my dress and I showed you last time but just the pattern um, this time I'm going to show you the dress that is this right now. Um, then I'm, later I'm going to show you my cushion that I made, my first ever thing that I ever sewed. So first is my dress, it's just got flowers and butterflies, the usual spring and summer stuff. It's got a bow and I think, I think the bow looks cute. It also, you don't have to wear it with a bow, I just think it goes better. Um, then the clippers are what Mum brought for me to wear on the back. I don't know if you can see it. Um, and then there's just puffy sleeves and that. So this is kind of a really light blue. I, I actually like the colour. Then this is a light pink. Um, yeah, so I would wear, wear it in summer more than all spring because it's supposed to be, I don't know, summery, I guess. Okay, now I'm going to show you my cushion, which I made. It's just got stars on. I haven't really known how to write letters or something, so I'm going to show you that. Here it is. It's kind of just got stars. and I don't know if your mummy showed you, but um, she made blinds for me, and this is the same material. And then this is the same as my old blinds, actually, with hearts on. Then there's more hearts. Then there's glittery stars on that I just stuck on for it. Uh, obviously, I'm not allowed to iron it by myself yet, because Mum's worried that I'll burn myself. But, yeah, I would like to try ironing. I think if I get used to it, then I think it'll be very boring. But, I hope you enjoyed my bit. It was a little bit shorter than last time's because um, I actually knew what I was going to say. Um, so I hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to um, click the notification button and hit the like and I'll see you next time.